Along the upper reaches, the shallower waters make fishing easier. But the best places are those close to the river mouth. Here, the salmon arrive in their prime, their bodies full of nutritious fat. The bears know this, and so they concentrate downstream. The upper reaches are left for the younger ones, who can't compete against the adults. On occasions, a brave young bear decides to try his luck alongside the adults. But here, each one has his own territory, and anyone who tries to invade it is quickly repelled. It doesn't make much sense to fight with so much food around, and the intruder does not put up much resistance. But he's not resigned to leaving empty-handed. When no one is looking, he grabs a fish that has been thrown aside and finally is able to enjoy a fat, juicy salmon. Mm. Though the bears continue to feed on the salmon, at this time of summer, fishing has become almost a game and they don't even eat the majority of those they catch. The salmon that have been discarded then have a second chance if they manage to get back into the water. When he is almost there, the predator stops him. After mutilating the salmon, he lets it go and sets off in search of another victim, who will probably receive the same treatment. The wounded salmon will virtually have no chance of fulfilling their mission of procreating. The majority flap around in the river, exhausting what little strength they have left in a vain attempt to reach their goal. And within days they will die at the hands of another bear or some other predator that crosses their path. A few weeks after they arrive, the rivers are like the scene of some terrible battle. Along the river banks float hundreds of dying salmon, and the bodies of those who are unable to survive this demanding test. The bears kill thousands of the incoming salmon, and many of them are simply discarded without even taking a bite out of them. It would appear to be a senseless massacre. But in Alaska, nothing goes to waste. Thousands of smaller predators and scavengers depend on the bears in order to be able to get at this source of energy brought by the sea every year. The salmon also benefit from this natural selection. The fact this test is so demanding means that only the fittest will make it to the very end. Moreover, the number of salmon that come to these coasts every year is such that if they all reach their final destination, the rivers would be saturated. The last to arrive destroy eggs previously laid by others and prepare their own nests right there. The population needs to be controlled, and that is precisely the role the predators perform. Slowly, the travelers continue on their way upriver. 
they have left behind the majority of their enemies. Now they are not constantly under attack from the bears, but the current becomes stronger and stronger, and they are increasingly weak. Any calm stretch comes as a relief to their tired bodies. There have been days without eating, struggling against the current. Now that they are weak, the seagulls become more daring and mercilessly attack them. But they don't defend themselves. All their energy is concentrated on continuing the journey, reaching the longed-for destination and procreating. The majority of the rivers of Alaska subject the salmon to one final test. Those that don't spawn near the river mouth but swim inland against the current are more than likely to face the greatest obstacle, the waterfalls. After swimming along fast-flowing waters for days or weeks, the salmon now have to leap up falls, which in some cases can be three meters high. Very few manage it. Exhausted by the effort, the majority are barely able to jump half the required height. But if they don't manage it, they will die in the attempt. Little by little, new arrivals reach the bottom of the waterfall, and soon it is full of salmon trying to make the tremendous leap. Their parents managed it the year before, so it's an obstacle that can be overcome. The further inland, the more exhausted the salmon will be. But Mother Nature compensates for this. Those salmon that spawn along the upper reaches arrive at the coast with more fat and so more reserves than those that remain at the river mouths. Thanks to this, they will still have the strength to once again overcome the harsh trials which Alaska faces them with. Finally, after many hardships, the salmon make it to their respective spawning grounds. For some, however, it is too late. The constant effort has exhausted their strength, and they have died just as success was within their grasp. Their companions are not in much better state, but they still have a mission to fulfill, and time is running out. After choosing a suitable place, the salmon prepare their nests. This consists of a small hollow which the female digs with strong movements of her tail. Behind her, a male has just chosen her as his mate and is anxiously waiting for her to deposit the eggs so he can fertilize them. There are constant challenges from competitors and every few seconds the male has to fight them off. Meanwhile, the female has to contend with others trying to lay claim to her nest. Each member of the couple sees off those of its same sex. Funguses already cover their emaciated bodies like a warning of approaching death. Their time is coming to an end. When the nest is ready, the female deposits over 4,000 eggs in the riverbed. As she does so, the male follows behind and with compulsive movements, covers them with semen.
It's all over. Thousands of miles and innumerable obstacles in order to reach this point. And once they have achieved their objective, the salmon die. Yes, I'm going to die. But I'm one of the lucky ones. I fulfilled my dream and the riverbed is already pulsing with the life of new salmon who will carry my blood. And they too, my children, will one day seek their destiny. And that day we, the salmon, will again sacrifice our lives for this land, the land of our ancestors, the land in which the giant bears live.